Hey everyone, John Michael Swift. Welcome back to my Romanza Improvisations. And today I'm going to talk about a concept called Jor and Chala. These are in concepts I borrowed from Indian classical music and I apply them to a lot of other styles of music that I do. And I'm going to explain how we do that today. Um, it's basically a technique of taking very simple textures and riffs and expanding them out into very long improvisations that give you a lot, a lot of time you know, just with just more music, but also gives you a way to kind of grow as you're practicing, which is really neat. Um, I have a lesson navigator down in the description box below, which will help you jump around this lesson to the parts you want to see the most. And there's also a link to my website, which will have additional lesson materials and links to other parts of the series. So use that if you need it. And yeah, let's get into it. First thing I should do is explain what Jod and Jala are. They are part of a longer process known as alap. And alap kind of means conversation. It's kind of a way of saying, I'm kind of getting to know who you are and how you are. And what they're talking about getting to know is the raga. A raga is like a little mini musical language within Indian music. Because it has its own phrase, it has a scale, which is like its alphabet, but then it has like special words unique to it with that particular alphabet. And the alap is kind of a way of getting to know all those things. And the first part of alap is unmeasured. There's no beat to it. It's just kind of free. So you have a drone going on, but someone just kind of freely sings the raga. They start, So you're kind of showing people the way that you use the scale, but it's you got as much time as you want and kind of chill a little bit and take your time. When you start to get into Jod, you start to have a pulse, although a slow one. So you see, I used a lot of the same licks there, but I kind of did them at a different pace and I did them with a beat to them. So Jawad gets a little, a little more intense. Jala starts to get very fast. You start to go. So Jala is like a faster version basically of Jod. And you can do this with a lot of different instruments, a lot of different ways, but the key idea is you're taking some basic ideas and you're making them faster and faster and faster. And this is really good because you kind of get a little bit of time to get familiar with what you're going to do before you start pushing the level of it. And basically, I'm going to take you through a process for taking your own style of music and using this process with it and getting out in front of people and playing stuff in a way that sounds musical, which is a lot of fun to do. Um, the first thing I just want to let you know is that you really can do this with just about any style you can find a basic texture for. Um, one thing I really like to do this with is with Travis picking. Um, once you've learned five or six Travis picking songs, you're going to learn a lot of, you know, you can start with a pattern like this. But you're going to find, just from playing other songs, there are other patterns that go with. Just from, you'll just kind of pick those up as you do songs. If you can find a way to kind of weave them together over, even I just picked like one chord here, like a C chord. And now, now that's kind of like what I call a pedaling bass, where you have at least one basic pattern but you might have some variations as well. Uh, but you have enough to kind of constitute like a core place you can come back to. Then what you do is you kind of find some spaces around it you can expand into. So one thing I like to do is do open string boxes, where right? I could like take the C chord, but I can kind of move it around to a couple different places. And it still sounds pretty decent. So I would take the patterns I'm working with and just start moving the chord around, see what happens. like 
one chord and just a couple of Travis picking patterns that just kind of roll off the tongue. And it, I could mess with that for a long time. There's lots I could do with that. Um, another style of music this happens in a lot is in European classical music. And we'll start to talk about how to adapt some of these ideas here. So there's a concept called a chacon or a pasakaya. They're kind of similar, kind of related. Chacon is kind of like a repeated chord progression. Pasakaya is kind of like a repeated bass. But, you know, if you take like a piece like the D minor Chacon by Johann Sebastian Bach. So the piece kind of starts out like... And then that basic chord progression is used strictly through most of the piece. And it's just you know variations and variations and variations on that same short chord progression. You can do this fairly easily if you've got some right hand patterns that can be repeated fairly easily over different chord patterns. So that will all be explained in due time. I mean, you can do this with beatboxing if you can start with something basic and then just do variations on it. You know, that's can be its own kind of thing. You could really do this with any style you can identify that pedaling pattern for. So the real key you want to do is start to put together that little core and you want to look for something very simple that catches your interest. Those are the two most important things because it's got to be something easy you can fall back to when it starts to get a little heated because as you see it will. We will really start to push ourselves with this. But you also want something that will keep your interest because you really want to kind of drive the interest as long as you can. It's really what the game is. How long can you play this simple idea and keep making it interesting again and again and again? That's really what we're working at. So once you've got your pedaling pattern picked and you've sort of kind of hedged in, what is it? You want to start to prepare for, I'd say, your first volley. Every time you try one of these improvisations, you want to try to go a little further with it. And any very time you want to improve something. But to set up for your first volley, the main thing you need is a, the pedaling pattern. And again, it might not have a melody in it. It might just be a texture, a harmony, and a rhythm, but it might not actually have a melodic hook in it. And in fact, a lot of times these types of things don't. You know, they're patterns usually. Um, like the pattern I'm going to use in this particular um, video is going to be what I call the trickle pattern. I showed it at the beginning. I'm just kind of taking my thumb and my pointer finger and going back and forth on the E string and just making a drone with that, and then using my thumb. To pull melodies out of that. That's my pattern. So it's very, very simple in and of itself, but I can do a lot with it. Um, the second thing you want to figure out is how you're going to end something. What you want to try to do is whatever you do, no matter how weird it gets in the middle, you want to try to start and end gracefully. So uh, we come up with what's called a mukra, at least what Indians call a mukra. It's kind of like a musical period. It's a way of saying the phrase is over. So what I kind of used at the beginning there was a those harmonics right there. And I've kind of been using that actually throughout the series, if you've noticed. Whenever I go to kind of like to that, I'm kind of like, okay, this part's done. Hmm. And that's kind of helpful to kind of, you know, keeping it musical. That's really key. Um, and the other thing you really want to figure out is how are you going to expand this basic idea? You want to have at least a couple of avenues for expansion in your mind. So the ones I've kind of picked out for this are, you know, kind of developing the different strings up and down the neck, which is decently interesting for me. I, mean, I can do that quite a bit, though. I mean, the main way I'm actually interested in developing the biggest challenge is actually trying to get things lower on the bass string because because the pedal is really on the E string, the thin E string. So trying to reach down for the bass notes. You have to do a big jump with the thumb fairly quickly. It's kind of hard. So playing on the B string is easy. Now that's pretty easy. Um, but when I have to start jumping to the bass strings a lot, that's tough. So um, that's kind of one way. I really want to focus on expanding my abilities to play on the bass strings with a lot of clarity. So that's a big one. Um, another one that's really fun for me to work with is certain types of rhythmic expansion. I, I really am always asking questions to like play between like stuff that's in a meter and stuff that's kind of free. It's like with this particular type of thing, you could play it in a meter or you can kind of play it freely. It really doesn't matter. And in fact, you can kind of develop your performance to kind of incorporate those things as you get more ready. A lot of times I'll just come up with some random stuff. I'll start it with like kind of free stuff.
It doesn't really have any meter, you know, but then eventually I start to pull it into a meter. You know, once you kind of get it into that, it's kind of, you, people can kind of feel that change once that repeated pattern is in there, the feel changes. So you can use that to keep developing it. And also you can add rhythmic challenges for you as you go with the piece. So there, we'll talk about techniques for doing that as well. So that's kind of what you need to get set up. Once all those things are established, you should start going for volleys. And it's, it's really helpful to time yourself to see how far you can go and how long you can keep a simple idea interesting. Um, what I'm going to do in the next video is I am going to start to go over some more advanced tricks or just some of the things that I've learned to really kind of improve constantly. But, there, but the simple formula is come up with your pedaling pattern, make sure something interesting, but still is simple in its own way. Uh, figure out your mukra or your ending phrase, what's your period, so you, so you can kind of say, okay, I'm ready to be done now, and you end it gracefully, and it sounds like a piece of music. And then you want to figure out how are you going to develop it? What are some techniques you want to use, or what are some ideas you want to toy with? Because you're going to, they're going to take you into all kinds of things you probably didn't even expect initially, but you want to have a couple of guide rails to keep you going as you get further down the path. So the next two videos are going to be me improvising on my little trickle pattern, so you can see how this stuff goes, and also advanced tips on improvising. Um, just so you can kind of see some of the things you can do to really get better and better and better as you do this with whatever pattern you choose. Um, thanks for sticking around, and I uh, hope to see you all soon in another video.